In this video, we are finally going to calculate some directions using the Google Directions API. So um, there's not going to be anything updating on the map from this video, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate directions and then print them to the log so that you can see that it's working. So I'll just do kind of an example. So we'll end up clicking on one of the users, uh, determine the route to them. We'll click yes, and then some information is going to print to the log. Uh, giving giving us some information about the directions and then later in the later videos in the course we're going to work on the rest of the stuff which is going to be you know adding the polylines adding the trip markers and all that kind of stuff so uh, yeah so let's get started all right so we're going to open up user list fragment and first we need to create a new object and this object is going to be responsible for helping us get the directions so we need to create a geo api client or geo api context variable and i'm going to call it m Geo API context. And I'm going to set it to null. Now we need to instantiate this variable. So um, the best one of the one good place to do it is oh, what are these doing here? These shouldn't be here. These should be at the top. These variables should be over here. But anyway, so um, a good place to do it is in the init Google Maps, init Google Map method. So right below where we get map async, what we're going to do is say uh, if the uh, MGO API context, if it equals null, that means we need to instantiate it. So MGO API context equals new geo API context. And we're going to use a builder and then dot API key. Uh, something is wrong. Oh, the bracket. So context dot builder. There we go. And then we want to do an API key. So we need to pass the Google Maps API key. So string r.string dot Google uh, Google API key. Google Maps API key is what I want. And then we want to do dot build. So that's going to help. That's going to instantiate our builder object, or sorry, our Google API context object, which is what we use to calculate directions. So now the next thing is uh, building a method to actually calculate directions. And to save time, I've created another gist. So visit this URL and I want to copy the contents. So the entire contents of this gist, I'm just going to copy that whole thing, go back to Android Studio and I'm going to paste it in. Now I'm going to make sure I get all the imports. And there we go. So before we talk about this, I just want to note something. If you're having problems, make sure that you check the version of the Google Directions API. Remember, you need to be using the most recent version. It's very important that you have the most recent version. If you don't have the most recent version, it's likely not going to work. So rewatch the video uh, previous to this one, the one before this one, and I talk about how to get the most recent version from Maven Central. So very important that you do that. So I just wanted to quickly, quickly remind you. So now let's go into our calculate directions method. Actually, before we go through it, let's actually just call it. So um, we want to call calculate directions inside of our dialog. Uh, let's see here. So inside the dialog inside of the alert dialog when it asks if we want to calculate directions to that user uh, down here so on info window click and inside here inside the positive section we want to call uh, calculate directions and we want to pass the marker so pass that marker uh, that got changed to final and there we go so now let's go back up to calculate directions and we're going to walk through this so the first thing we need to do is determine what the destination is. We know where we're coming from because where we're coming from is just the user position. So if you recall from earlier in the course, we set the, this user location object user position to whatever the user's current position is, so the authenticated user. So we already have the origin position. Uh, we need to get the destination. And the destination is, uh, we can get that from the marker. So whatever marker they're clicking, if we look at the map, uh, I'm going to reset the map here. So remember, if we click on a marker, that's the marker we're selecting. That's the marker that's getting passed to calculate directions. So we have the position of that. So we have the origin and we have the destination. Now, uh, to get started, we use a directions API request. We pass our geo API context uh, variable. Uh, directions, you, you need to use uh, dot, dot alternatives and set it to true if you want to be able to show all the possible routes, not the most, not just the most efficient one. We want to show all the possible routes. So that's why we use alternatives and set that to true. Uh, we set the origin, like I said, using the user position right here. And then at that point, we're ready to start calculating the directions. So we go directions.destination, set the destination. 
which is de defined up here. Uh, and then we set a callback. So this callback is going to be triggered as soon as the request is completed. So this is where we're going to retrieve our information about our directions. So what uh, what kind of request? What kind of object is this? This directions result object. Uh, we can actually get some more information on this object from the documentation. So I'm going to open up a new browser window and go to Maps, Documentation, Directions, Start. And if you scroll down, you can see what kind of uh, what kind of information we're going to get from that request. You can see that below is a sample in JSON. Uh, you're going to get some. You're going to get a JSON object with geocoded waypoints, routes, and some other some other information down here, but uh, generally what we're after is we're going to be after the the routes and the legs and then we can use the duration the distance and there's also an encoded path that we can pass to uh, build the polylines later on so if I look at the request again so what we're interested in is getting the getting the routes getting the legs and then that will tell us the different distances, durations, end addresses, all that stuff. So basically you can extract any of this information if you wanted to, um, yeah, in general. But what we're going to be using is a, we're going to be, we're going to be using the leg and kind of doing, do, encoding it and then passing it to the polyline so that the polylines get built. But in general, this is what the response looks like. So this is, this is what you can expect. So I'll go back to Android Studio and uh, we can we can run this and then you can take a look at some of the some of the information that's printed out so i'm going to run that okay i'm going to go to the chat room and i will go to the fragment now i'll click on one of these users click on the dialog click yes and now we're going to take a look at the log cat so i'll clear the log cat make sure i have the right device selected and let's see here i'll, I'll click it again because uh, it wasn't open so calculate root go yes so here we can see some of the information printed to the log. I'll actually filter it on calculate directions. Yeah, so here's here's the information that gets printed out. So we have, um, let's see, calculate directions called. There's the destination location. Uh, here's the routes. So you can kind of scroll down here. You can see all the routes. They're just GPS coordinates. Uh, we have our duration of 10 minutes, uh, distance of 8.4 kilometers. Uh, and yeah, so that, that's just some of the information. Basically, the takeaway here is that it's working. We're able to retrieve a request, retrieve some results and the information. Uh, so the, the next question is, how do we actually use this to draw polylines on the map? So that's going to be those blue lines. I'll open the completed version of the app, which is on this phone here. So if I calculate directions, these these blue things or so these gray things are polylines. So how do we how do we actually use the directions to draw these polylines? And that's a whole different thing in itself. So in the next video, we are going to take a look at that.